In this video, I'll be talking about autism and Asperger's so that by the end of the video, you'll know the difference. Coming up. Hey, I'm Dan. I have Asperger's syndrome, OCD, ADHD, and dyslexia. I make weekly videos on this topic. So if you're new around here and want to learn more, consider subscribing and turn the notification bell on so you get notified when I upload a video. Hey everybody, just a really quick disclaimer. I'm not actually saying in this video that every single person who has Asperger's syndrome or classic autism falls into these specific rules. Uh, this is literally just like a basic medical, I guess, or professional outline of, of the differences to show like some clear cut differences between the majority of the people. Also, Asperger's is an autism spectrum condition and it was taken out of the DSM-5 um, nomenclature for diagnosing people. So now it's just autism spectrum disorder and it's becoming an autism spectrum condition. So Asperger's is autism and classic autism is autism. They're all under the umbrella of the autism spectrum. So that is uh, something to be aware of. Okay, back to the video. So the information that I'm sharing in this video, I've not seen anybody else talk about on videos on YouTube. So let's get stuck in. Okay, so before we get started, I'd just like to know what profession you're from or how you've come to this video. You know, are you working in the field or are you someone just generally wanting to know the difference? Leave me a comment in the comment section below. I read every single one and I reply to every single one. So Asperger's and autism, what's the difference? Let's find out. So the first difference I wanna discuss, and let me just set the tone of the language here. I'm gonna be talking about classic autism when I talk about classic types of autism, and I'll talk about Asperger's syndrome when I talk about Asperger's syndrome. Now, a lot of people don't like to use classification terminology anymore because they find that it's derogative, but for the purpose of this video, educationally, we'll talk about Asperger's syndrome is like a higher functioning and then classic autism is a lower functioning. Even though a lot of people don't like to use functioning labels, this is just for the purpose of this video. Okay, so number one is IQ or intellect. So basically people with Asperger's syndrome usually have an average to above average IQ, meaning that they are intellectually quite bright and they tend to focus on like science and maths and history and some very deep scientific, um, complex, puzzled, kind of computer natured topics because that's the way that their brain is wired and other things that they're interested in, but they excel in those areas. Now, looking at the comparison between that and classic autism, people of classic autism have average to below average IQs. So the difference here is that people with Asperger's syndrome will usually or typically display a higher IQ average than that of a person with classic autism. A person with classic autism won't really be interested in the magnitude of intellect that a person with Asperger's syndrome usually displays. People like Albert Einstein had Asperger's syndrome. Uh, there are other super famous people like Nikola Tesla, probably Elon Musk, uh, and other people like that who display these traits of Asperger's syndrome. And you can see how their IQ would be set higher than the average person. Okay, so number two is verbal communication. Now, people with classic autism usually have little to no verbal communication skills. They can't develop these because the type of autism spectrum condition that they have and the way their brain has worked is leaving them with difficulty learning these skills. Now a person with Asperger's syndrome will have a very good verbal communication skill set that they have learned and developed over many years and people with Asperger's syndrome usually have great verbal skills and they are very good at talking. Okay socially they may not be as advanced as a typical neurotypical person but verbally, they can have verbal communications and be very good at verbal communication. As people with classic autism will have difficulty talking, people with Asperger's syndrome will have ease of talking and actually creating verbal conversation. That is the main difference there for number two. Just as some extra information, I'll leave a link in the card above to a video I did for Asperger's versus high functioning autism and what the difference is there. And I will leave that in the card above so you can check that out because that might be of some interest to you also. Okay, so number three is vocabulary. 
Now, people with classic autism have little to no vocabulary at all, and they can't develop those skills, and they have a very difficult time trying to, to learn or develop any skills in learning vocabulary at all. People with Asperger's syndrome have a vast, large, and quite huge volume of vocabulary that is usually somewhat complex, and they have some, um, almost not an obsession, but an interest in vocabulary and expanding that vocabulary. So people with Asperger's syndrome have a usually really good vocabulary skill set, whereas people on the classic autism side wouldn't really tend to have that good a vocabulary or a large vocabulary set at all. So people with classic autism, limited vocabulary. People with Asperger's syndrome, quite a high volume of vocabulary in their vocabulary skill set. Okay, so number four is day-to-day skill set. Now, day-to-day skill set is very interesting. And I'll outline what a day-to-day skill set is. Basically, the things that a neurotypical person does on a daily basis, uh, which is like getting up, getting themselves ready for work or whatever, or school, and then getting themselves to school and going off on those tasks. Uh, don't think anything of it, but there are various skills that are entwined there in, in, in getting up and doing all those things. Now, there's things that range from like executive function skills to hygiene and then getting dressed and things like that, which is basically your daily life skills. Now, a person with Asperger's syndrome can learn to put on their clothes. They can learn to brush their own teeth and then they can learn like things like the importance of going shopping or the things like the importance of getting a job. Um, they may need you know, help with managing that job or managing their finances and organizing their life, but they can still learn the skills that they need to physically prepare themselves for something in the real world tasks. Now, a person who displays traits of classic autism would have a limited skill set in this region and would then rely on support and help lifelong for this type of skill set. So they may have issues with hygiene and cleanliness. They may have issues with trying to, you know, go to the bathroom on their own and use a toilet. They may have issues of putting on their own clothes and you know, they have little to no concept of the reasoning for going out and doing shopping, depending on their, obviously, level on the spectrum, but a classic autism type person would need daily, daily support and day-to-day help with those tasks because they just don't really develop those skills, typically, in a classic autism case. So a person with Asperger's syndrome can live somewhat independently using their day-to-day skills, but a person with classic autism would need daily support and lifelong support for just those daily tasks alone, let alone emotional and physical support for other things. Okay, so number five is speech delay. Now, as autism is a developmental condition, um, it does have like a gradual time period of how it like develops from one thing to another. Now, one thing that is interesting between the difference of Asperger syndrome and classic autism is speech delay. Now, typically children who have Asperger's syndrome will not display speech delay in growing up like they they have they'll have typically a normal speech delay like I said as their vocabulary is super intense and very um, varied then their speech delay doesn't come into it you know they'll, they'll gradually get speech they'll learn from like TV and movies and mimicking other people through echolalia and things like that and then they'll learn how to, to speak um, at a typical rate right now people or kids And children with autism, of classic autism, they will have a speech delay in growing up. So growing up, they will have a varied speech delay and their speech will be very varied. Like obviously the the delay will be there, but then also there'll be very um, big gaps in, in what they can say and how they relate that to real world situations. So in short, Asperger's syndrome, typically not really much of a speech delay. Classic autism, there will be a speech delay present most of the time. Okay guys, my next video over here is for sensory processing disorder. Please check that out and it'll be super, super awesome. If you'd wanna learn more, please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time guys. Peace.